Welcome to all of you who are tuning in today. Some of you are for, from nearby, others from faraway places. It means so very much that you've taken time to uh, join us for this worship this morning on this, the first Sunday in the season of Advent. The fir first Advent candle today will be lit by Anne Obchinsky. Today is the first Sunday of the Advent season when we anticipate with great joy the promise of Jesus' return. The first candle we light is called the hope candle because of the hope we have in Jesus, our Redeemer and Lord. This candle is sometimes called the prophecy candle, for the prophets of Israel prophesied the coming of Jesus, a king in the family line of David, born to be savior of the world. They proclaimed him as the promised Messiah who would rule the world and bless all nations with justice, righteousness, truth, and peace. As we light this candle, we remember that Jesus first came to us in the most humble way, in a manger in Bethlehem to bring light to a world lost in darkness. Jesus fulfilled his divine destiny by sacrificing his life on the cross to deliver us from sin and raise us to new life. But we also remember Jesus' promise to come again, to receive his sons and daughters through faith and welcome them to the eternal home in heaven he's gone before us to prepare. Until his return, we are faithful to watch, wait, pray, and serve. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you for the hope which is ours in Jesus, your Son. Prepare our hearts for the Lord's coming with eager expectation until the day he comes again in power and great glory. For we pray this in the name of Jesus, the one who is and was and who is to come. Amen. Blessed is he who comes as king, who comes in the name of the Lord. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. I will hear what the Lord God has to say, a voice that speaks for peace. Peace for all people and for his friends, and those who turn to him in their hearts. His help is near for those who fear him, and his glory will live in our land. Blessed is he who comes as king, who comes in the name of the Lord, glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. 
God has made us his people through our baptism into Christ, living together in trust and hope we confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, O Lord, and come. Prepare us for the day of your return, and give us joy each day in serving you. Speak to us now words of hope and life and salvation, we pray, for Jesus' sake. Amen. The first lesson for this uh, first Sunday in Advent is from Isaiah. The 64th chapter begins at verse 1. Oh, that you would rip open the heavens and come down, that the mountains might quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil to make your name known to all your adversaries, and that the nations might shudder at your presence. When you perform great things we never expected, you came down, the mountains shook in your presence. And since before time began, one has heard that no eye has seen a God like you, whose work is, is sure for all those who wait for him. You meet those who joyfully do what's right, those who remember you in their ways. Uh, but how angry you being with us for all our persistent sin? Can we be saved? We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a polluted garment. We all wither like a leaf, and our iniquities like the wind blow us away. No one calls upon your name, or makes any effort to reach out to you. Uh, you've hidden your face from us and delivered us to face the consequences of our sin. And yet, O oh Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay, you are our potter, we are the work of your hands. Do not be angry, O oh Lord, and will remember our iniquity forever, for we are your people. Here ends the lesson. The psalm for the day is from Psalm 80, beginning at verse 1. Listen, O shepherd of Israel, the one who leads Joseph like a flock. For you are enthroned upon the cherubim, shine forth before Ephraim and Benjamin and Manasseh. Stir up your mighty power and come to save us. Restore us, O God. Let your face shine upon us that we may be saved. O Lord God of hosts, how long will you be angry with your people's prayers? You have fed them with the bread of tears and given them tears to drink in full measure. You have made us a scorn of our neighbors, and our enemies laugh among themselves. Restore us, O Lord God of hosts. Let your face shine on us, that we may be saved. Here ends the le lesson. Then the words of the Apostle Paul in his first letter to the Corinthians, inspired by the Spirit of God, first chapter beginning at verse 3. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God always for you because of the grace of God which was given you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in him with all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift, as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, guiltless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. For God is faithful, by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. 
The Holy Gospel for today is from Mark's Gospel. The 13th chapter begins at verse 24. Jesus said, But in those days after that tribulation, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will be falling from heaven and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with power and great glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. And so also when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away before all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But on that day or on that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Take heed then, watch, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Watch, therefore, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, uh, or in the morning, or at noonday, in case he comes suddenly and finds you fast asleep. And what I say to you, I say to all, watch. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Happy New Year! Now it sounds so funny and even ridiculous to hear such a greeting when it's only the end of November, but the church calendar marks today as the beginning of a new year because this is the first day in the season we call Advent. What does Advent mean? Advent means coming or arrival. Uh, it's the time when we give special attention to Jesus' promise to come again. Throughout God's Word, there are no less than 1,845 references to Jesus' promise to come again. 19 New Testament passages teach us that Jesus' return could be at any moment. Of the New Testament's 260 chapters, 200 make reference to the Second Coming. And every Sunday morning we confess with millions upon millions of believers the world over, He shall come again to judge the living and the dead. The promise of Jesus' return is a cornerstone of our faith and at the very heart of Advent. I remember a few times over the years when other pastors in town called up and said, in our church we don't celebrate Advent uh, like you do. Uh, it's not part of our tradition, but we want to get in on this and introduce our church to Advent. So can you teach me about Advent and, and how we can celebrate it in our church? Well, what a wonderful thing. Uh, some years ago now, I remember how my uh, dear Aunt Christina passed away on Sunday morning as it was the very first Sunday in the season of Advent. Just as millions upon millions of first Advent candles were being lit all around the world, the first Advent candle was described as the prophecy candle, it's called the, as well, the hope candle, because it speaks to us of the glorious hope of everlasting life in Jesus for us and for all who trust and follow him. Realize that there are many Advents. Jesus' first Advent was uh, his most humble arrival in Bethlehem that first Christmas long ago. Uh, then there's uh, a second Advent when Jesus promises to return uh, with power and great glory to receive his church at the end of time for this world. But there's still another Advent because we meet Jesus in death whenever our death might be. And Jesus comes to us every day, of course, in his word, 
in his, his Holy Supper, in prayer, through his Holy Spirit, and in the needs of others, whether we recognize it or not. He knocks on our heart's door that we might open the door and invite him into our lives day after day. People everywhere have an enduring fascination with and uh, with the end of the world speculating about and trying to predict when that last day will be. But it's all a waste of time and energy, for in the verses leading up to our Gospel lesson, Jesus warns us to be on guard so that we're not led astray by false prophets who would predict the precise day and hour of his return, because no one knows the day of his return, only that there will be general telltale signs. Jesus says, as he begins, this will be a time of tribulation. In the original text, the word here means pressure or stress. And without a doubt, we live in a time of unprecedented stress, and pressure, anxiety, fear, and despair. Here in North America, two-thirds of office visits to family doctors are prompted by stress-related symptoms. Our troubled world needs the lasting hope that only Jesus can give as never before. And Jesus counsels us here to learn the lesson of the fig tree. For when a fig tree puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. It's a no-brainer. So in the same way, when all these things described in this apocalyptic chapter begin, begin to take place, we know that the time of Jesus' return is near. The word for time used here is the word kairos. It means a special, defining moment with unique opportunity. If missed, it will be too late to capture ever again. We're so easily fooled with the illusion that we have all the time in the world, uh, but don't procrastinate about spiritual things. What a mistake that would be. So how do we live then as Advent people? Advent people live with urgency because the time is short, so we should live always with readiness, being prepared for the day of Jesus' promised return. Jesus teaches it's like a businessman going on a journey and leaving his employees in charge until he returns. Those employees wait with eager anticipation for their boss's return, even though they don't know exactly when it will be. But their waiting doesn't mean they're lazy, twiddling their thumbs, comfortable, watching TV, being careless and reckless, wasting precious time away. No, not at all. They're busy, they're hard at work carrying out all the responsibilities they've been given to do. It's an active waiting. As a teenager, I spent some summers working for a farmer friend. Before he went away on vacation with his family for perhaps two or three weeks at a time, he gave me a long list of farm chores and projects. I never dreaded the day of his return, because I tried to accomplish as much as I possibly could to impress him when he got back home. So his return was always a day to look forward to. That's how it is when we wait for Jesus' return. We look forward to it with joyful anticipation while we're busy and diligent, fulfilling his special calling for our lives and the work he's given us to do. The world is waiting and longing for the day when the uh, Pfizer vaccine, the Moderna vaccine, the Oxford vaccine, and many others will soon be available here and all around the world so that coronavirus uh, can be finally defeated, fear of in infection will be gone, and life can return to normal. We'll be able to visit again without restrictions, shake hands, embrace, a shop without wearing a mask, worship together, and do all kinds of special things that we've long been denied. That day simply can't come soon enough. But as we wait, we're not simply lounging around and wasting time, of course not. This season of waiting on standby is so very challenging, but it's a 
critically important Kairos season to follow public safety measures, physical distancing, mask wearing, washing our hands again and again, saying no to parties and social events in our homes, a time for restricted travel, and shopping only for what's essential uh, to help and serve each other. We're all in this together and our collective efforts can help to turn the tide. Each of us has an important part to play in preventing the spread and flattening the curve while we're waiting for the vaccine to arrive. It's a time of, for preparation, like a bride and groom waiting for their wedding day, busy planning for their celebration and a happy future to, together. It's like a pregnant couple waiting patiently for the arrival of their baby, not wasting precious time, but busy preparing their baby's room, baby clothing, a crib, and all that's needed to welcome their precious little gift of this little newborn. In the Old Testament scripture, the word wait also translates hope, koa, to wait and to hope. And so as Advent people, we wait not with fear and dread, but with hope and joy-filled anticipation for the day of Jesus' return. And it's noteworthy that in this very short gospel text, we find the word watch, not once, but four times. It's got to be pretty important. Jesus warns us to keep watch, not to fall asleep, but to stay wide awake, for we don't know when our Lord will return at midnight, early in the morning, or at midday. The theme of thraldom is a common one in fairy tales and myths all around the world and popular in many video games today too. Princes, princesses, and many others are held captive under the evil power and spell of the wicked witch or demon. The Brothers Grimm's classic story Snow White tells of the wicked queen's stepmother, jealous of Snow White and her beauty, and how she tempts her with a poisoned apple. With a single bite, Snow White falls under her curse of sleeping death. She's in thrall to the evil queen mother, uh, bound by her spell in a perpetual trance-like sleep. But it's more than a fairy tale because it speaks to us of the dangerous reality and the insidious power of thraldom in this world today. How many people are held captive under the power and control of a pathological relationship, of a psychological domination and spiritual bondage, whether it's in a, an unhealthy marriage, family, friendship, or workplace relationship? This world exerts a sedating, hypnotic power sin and evil that strives to lull us into a deep sleep, a death-like slumber so we're unaware of spiritual reality. It works overtime to cast its spell of deceit that would enslave and neutralize us so that we're powerless in making our lives count for God and unprepared for the day of Jesus' return. So how we need to heed Jesus' call to keep wide awake. In the book of Revelation, we learn about seven churches. The church at Sardis is called the sleeping church. So Jesus pleads with Sardis, wake up or I'll catch you off guard like an unexpected thief, for you don't know what day or time I'm coming. At the Sardis church, the lights were on every night of the week. It was a busy and active church. Sardis had a reputation for being alive, but Jesus said, you're dead. For in reality, Sardis was a church that was spiritually sound asleep. Sardis, located in present-day Turkey, uh, strategically situated on a high mountain plateau, a fortress city believed to be impregnable. One day, long centuries ago, Cyrus the Persian king marched his army to Sardis, determined to conquer the city. 
He offered a reward to any of the soldiers who could find an entry point up into Sardis. One of the soldiers took up the challenge. He studied the fortress until one day he noticed a defender accidentally drop his helmet over the city wall and climb down to retrieve it. The Persian soldier memorized the route and then one night led a band of soldiers up that steep rock cliff following that narrow rock fall, weaving their way along that winding trail up into the city where they were surprised to discover it completely unguarded and defenseless. No sentries were on duty because the defenders were overconfident believing their city could not be conquered. Sardis was sound asleep when it should have been wide awake and so it was defeated that night. So Jesus warns us, watch, don't fall asleep. The New Testament church lived with great urgency, convinced Jesus' return was coming soon. And so an ancient Advent prayer that first century church is preserved for us in the conclusion to the Apostle Paul's first letter to the Corinthian believers, Maranatha, Maranatha, our Lord come. A very simple and short and beautiful prayer. Would you repeat with me now this prayer and make it your Advent prayer, not only through this Advent season, but every day as we await our Lord's return. Maranatha, our Lord come, amen. Let's pray. Lord, we offer you thanks and praise for the gift of your son Jesus, who came to us in Bethlehem so long ago, for the assurance that he still comes today, to all will receive him in their hearts and for his promise to come again in power and great glory on that last day to when he comes to receive his faithful people to heaven to celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb forever and ever. Teach us to live as your Advent people with urgency, hope, patient expectation, waiting, praying, working, watching, serving, and preparing for the day of Jesus' return. Once again, we intercede on behalf of all who struggle with health in so many different ways, especially Selma Wagner, June Fisher, Donna Rost, Valerie Malice, and so many others who need your help as only you can give, as we remember them now before you in our silent prayer. Stir up your healing power within them to mend and restore all that's damaged, broken, and diseased in body, mind, and spirit with assurance that you hold them safely in the palm of your hand. We continue to uphold Dr. Dina Hinshaw, Dr. Teresa Tam, all frontline healthcare workers, specialists, researchers, government leaders in these very challenging days. Grant them safety wisdom, courage, stamina, and daily dependence on you. And give us all patient resolve to honor all the public health measures to prevent the pandemic spread until that day when safe and effective vaccines are prepared, especially for those who need them most of all. With your faithful people throughout the ages, we pray, Maranatha, our Lord, come. For we ask these things in the name of Jesus, the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the last, the first and the end, the one who is and who was and who is to come, who has taught us to pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to, be, to shine upon you, be 
gracious to you always. The Lord uh, smile upon you and give you his peace. Amen. <laughs>